Yes, good afternoon. Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone is well and thank you all once again for tuning in. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you drop a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. We're less than 500 subs now of 18,000, which is absolutely insane. Channel vlogs and more fan cams are coming to the channel. Um, we're going to be talking about, as you can tell by the thumbnail, Santiago Jimenez. Um, and it's a report that the Spurs web have put out. Um, this is their website, and it says, report, Tottenham are now ready to meet the club's valuation of striker. Then it says, the Daily Mirror have claimed that Tottenham Hotspur are now ready to meet Feyenoord's valuation of Santiago Jimenez. Jimenez's goal-scoring exploits this season have been difficult for Europe's heavy, heavy hitters to ignore with the Mexican having scored 15 goals in 12 matches across all competitions so far. 90 Minute reported a little over a month ago that the centre-forward is on the radar of several Premier League clubs, including Spurs. Tottenham's interest with the player was also confirmed by Fabrizio Romano on his YouTube channel last week with the journalist adding that Feyenoord are expecting to demand around 45 million euros which is 39 million pounds um and then it goes on to say um a little bit further down it goes on to say spurs willing to meet the price for jimenez the mirror have now asserted that spurs have stepped up their interest having sent scouts to rotterdam to watch him in action during during finals 3-1 win over lazio in the champions league last week the report asserts that having seen the 22-year-old score a brace against Serie A's side, the Lillywhites are ready to meet the club, the Dutch club's valuation in January. The outlet adds also that Real Madrid are keen on landing Jimenez, but Tottenham are hoping to steal a march on the uh, on the others when the transfer window opens. And then it spares Spurs uh, with opinion. So this is whoever wrote the report. I do wonder if Tottenham's decision on whether to sign Jimenez might be impacted by Son's brilliant run of form in the number nine role. The club might ideally want to be put off by signing a number nine until next summer, but if they feel they would be risk losing out on the Mexican, they might be forced to act in January. Now, the last part about that, um, as as well as human Son has been, I do personally think we need someone else in the team who has that killer edge. We only really have one out-and-out out finisher at the football club. If you look at Perisic, he's a creative player. Kulisevsky's a creative player. Madison's a creative player. Richarlison, no one really knows what he is. Brian Hill, we're yet to see. Brennan Johnson, we've only seen a couple of times. We only really have one out-and-out out player in the football club, in my opinion, that can put the ball in the back of the net and has done over 100 times in the Premier League for Tottenham. Um, I do think we need to bring in bring in someone else. Now, everyone knows I'm a huge fan uh, of Santiago Jimenez. I actually watched the Feyenoord versus Lazio game. I watched a lot. I watched a lot of it, and I watched the highlights as well. All the goals. This guy is a magnificent finisher. 15 goals in 12 games uh, in the Eredivisie. Feyenoord sitting currently third. Everyone's going to say, "Oh, but he's only done it in the Eredivisie." I think he's got five goals in nine games in the Europa League. Um, and he's got three goals in two games in the Champions League. So he has proved he can do it on Europe. Now, Tottenham don't particularly have a fantastic record when it comes to st signing strikers. If you look over the years, the likes of Soldado, the likes of Fraser Campbell, uh, the likes of Victor Janssen, the likes of Vinicius, you know, I mean... It, it, the list goes on and on and on and on. And at a time, once upon a time, we had the likes of Jermaine Defoe, Robbie Keane, Dimitar Berbatov, Peter Crouch, Teddy Sheridan, you know, Palvachenko. We've had some good strikers. But ever really since Harry Kane has been around this football club, we haven't really brought anyone else in to add the firepower. But maybe because that's a, because Harry Kane's firepower was 30 goals a season. And you might potentially say we could do the same with Human Son. Don't get me wrong, we could. But one injury to Human Son, the, the similar situation that we was in under um, 
under when we was in Harry Kane. One injury to our, our main man and the firepower, you know, he's not looking great. And Santiago Jimenez is 22 years of age, Mexican international, who's got 16 goal contributions in 13 games, which is absolutely insane. Insane numbers. Like, ridiculous. Um, when you look at the, the numbers on the screen, they are absolutely ridiculous. You know, there he is. He's won a, he's won a Dutch league title. He's won uh, Mex a couple of Mexican trophies. He's won the Gold Cup. Um, centre forward, four goals in 22 games uh, for Mexico. When you look at his profile as well, um, you know, 22 years of age, left-footed, only really plays as a centre forward. Contract expires, as you can see on the screen, in 2027. Last contract was only last year. They are looking at 45 million euros, which is 39 million pounds. In my opinion, that would be an absolute steal. An absolute steal. When you look at what we've got collectively as firepower, I'm going to bring up the squad that we, we took uh, to Crystal Palace. If you take Human Son out of this 11, who's going to score the goals? Richarlison has four goals in a Spurs shirt in 18 months. Kulazewski, I think he's got three goals in his last 30 games. Madison will obviously contribute. Basuma doesn't really score goals. Saar doesn't really score goals. I know we're a team now that contributes collectively everywhere. You look at the bench. Who's going to come on and, and score a couple of goals to get us out of a situation? At the moment, Son scored uh, eight. Our second highest goal scorer is Madison on three. Richarlison has one. Kulazewski has two, I think. Saar's got one. Romero's got two. I think Van der Ven's got one and Romero's got two. So, you know, I get, I, I've always said I want us to be a team that scores from everywhere. And I do still want that. But at the same time, we need more firepower. When you look where we are in the league at the moment, sitting top of the league and well-deserved. We've got a few tough games coming up, you know. We've scored 29 go 22 goals. Uh, only Newcastle, Villa, Brighton have scored more and Arsenal. Um, and when you look, uh, if you look at Newcastle, for instance, they've got Callum Wilson on seven and Isak on six. Um Kieran Trippi has also got six assists. Ollie Watkins got five assists and five goals. Salah's got five, uh, uh, eight goals and four assists. So, listen, there, there's when you look at the fixture we've got coming up as well, you know, Aston Villa, Chelsea, Man City, Newcastle, West Ham. Our next six games are very tough, in my opinion. I, th I think we'll win some. I do think we beat Chelsea and Wolves. I'll say that right now. Chelsea and Wolves, I think, will beat. Villa, going to be tough. Man City, as tough as it gets. West Ham and Newcastle, the only saving grace we've got with those is both of those are still in the League Cup and both of those are playing in Europe. So we're going to have the fresher legs going into those games. To put this into perspective, we've got six games before we play Newcastle, right? Newcastle got United, Newcastle, uh, Arsenal, Dortmund, Bournemouth. So they've got one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They've got three more games to play than us. Um, I think we just need more firepower. If we were hypothetically to bring in Santiago Jimenez, an attacking midfielder and a defender of all good quality that can challenge the 11 and they've got good technical attributes, like a, we, we're going to need a defender who's very quick on the ball and is very comfortable with the ball at his feet. You know, when you look at the, the centre-back from Galatasaray, um, I cannot remember what his name is for the life of me. Um, um, I can't remember what his name is. It's going to come to me. It's going to come to me. It is... I can't remember what his name is. Victor Nelson, that's the one. We were heavily linked to this guy. And now he can't really get in the Galatasaray side. And our old defender, by the name of Davidson Sanchez, has gone and, and, and kicked him out of his spot. And Galatasaray are sitting 
second in the league. It's a two-horse race between Fenerbahce and Galatasaray. Um, another defender we've talked, we've spoken about many times on this channel, Tosin had a bio, only played one game, expected to be fully fit back in the like, middle of November, which is in a couple of weeks' time. Um, and you think, you know, we've also looked, spoken about Lloyd Kelly. I don't think Lloyd Kelly's at the level I would prefer Tosin had a bio. In an ideal world, I would love to have us have gone out and brought, you know, Tap Sober, but he signed a new deal. Um, I think for me, the centre-back and, and the number nine are the two most important positions. But someone reported to me, you know, when you look at our 11, you know, let's look at the 11 that played against Crystal Palace, right? We don't really have strong depth in any of our backline positions at all, really. Let's look at the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper drop-off between Vicario and Fraser Forstar is absolutely huge. The drop-off between Ben Davis and, and Udogi is huge. We've already seen that. Who comes in for Romero and Van der Ven? Ashley Phillips or Davis? I don't think it will be Dyer. Poro is light years clear of Emerson Royale, even though Emerson Royale come in and did some good bits. Benson Corey's good cover for Sara and Bissouma. Obviously, he will be challenging to get back into that 11. And Hoiberg's very good cover. Our midfield, in terms of central midfielder and central defensive midfielder, is the strongest depth we've got in the team, in my opinion. Who comes in for Madison if he gets injured? Is it Giovanni de Celso? If so, the drop-off is massive. Who comes in for Human Son? Is it Richarlison? If so, the guy can't even put the ball in the back of the net right now. So, who comes in for Kulisevsky? Is it Brennan Johnson? I'm okay with that. But we do need to get through to this January transfer window unscathed. And we could be looking at an absolutely huge champion, uh, huge transfer window. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten games between now and the January transfer window. And to put that into perspective, let's just talk about Newcastle, for instance. Newcastle have got two. Uh, yeah. Three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, 14, 15. Newcastle have got 15 games. Those five games are absolutely huge for us because we're, we're, we're going to be the fresher team going into December. Man City, I know they've got a great squad, but they're going to be playing every three or four days, the same as Newcastle, the same as West Ham, same as Brighton, same as Liverpool, same as Arsenal. So if we can nurse our players and get through to the January transfer window, I think we'll be in a very, very, um, a very, very, you know, very, very good uh, position. I do want to bring another report up from the Spurs web, um, and it's, it's from Ali Gold. Um, and he says, Alistair Gold says it's no secret what Spurs will look to do in the January transfer window. Uh, hang on, let's just get rid of his advert because for some reason it's there. Ali Gold has admitted that he is unsure whether Dyer could fit into Ange Postacoglu's back line, even if there was an injury to one of Tottenham's two starting centre backs. First of all, get Dyer out of this football club. Christian Romero and Mickey van der Ven have been exceptional so far this season, and pundits are now starting to notice. Uh, of this, take note of this uh, solid displays. Gary Lineker even claimed on Monday that you are the best centre back uh, partnership in the Premier League uh, at the moment. Gary Lineker, uh, sorry, however, Dyer is the only senior centre back that Postacoglu could turn to if there's an injury to the Argentine or the Dutchman. And this is what I'm talking about. The drop off is huge. The Australian has has the option of turning to 18 year old summer signing Ashley Phillips, who has made the bench on a few occasions. While reports indicate that Alfie Dorrington is also thought to be highly um, by the coaches of North London and the North London club. Tottenham needs to sign a central defender. Spurs uh, Tottenham centre-back situation, Gold said on his YouTube channel, we still don't know exactly um, how Dyer is going to work in this system if we were to come in. Obviously, his contract situation appears to suggest that he's not going to be here beyond the end of the season. For the future, they've got Ashley Phillips or Alfie Dorrington, but January window, I don't think it's a secret that Ange Postacoglu would say the same. They need to bring in another centre-back spot on. The Spurs were opinion then says, um, if there's an injury to Romero, I have no doubt Postacoglu would turn to die ahead of Phillips or Dorrington, given the England's international experience. However, if Van der Ven misses a couple of games, it's possible that Postacoglu could play Ben Davis at, at left centre-back, having tried the Welshman at that position a couple of occasions during pre-season. And this is what I'm talking about. The drop-off is huge. 
we need to, if we can somehow go injury free throughout this whole season, obviously we're going to get injuries eventually. But if there's no big, big injuries, like an injury to a winger at the moment isn't huge as long as it's not human son or Kulazewski, like Brian Hill, Manuel Solomon, Ivan Perisic, Brennan Johnson, it's not a game changer. If Son gets injured or Madison or Van der Ven or, you know, Romero or Vicario or Bissouma, it's it could be the difference between us winning the next five or six or losing the next five or six, you know? Our squad is so, so important right now. You know, we're sitting here currently top of the Premier League after 10 games with 10 games coming up between now and the January transfer window. If hypothetically we were, to, we were to bring in these three players, Santiago Jimenez, Tosin Adorabaya, or another good centre-back who's competent on the ball and a good defender, and an attacking midfielder, I think we'd finish in, in the top three. Liverpool are going, to be, are going to be in the Cups. They're going to be in the Europa League till probably the latter stages. Same as Arsenal. We've got one game a week. Look what Newcastle did last year. Our squad right now is better than Newcastle's last year, and they managed to get top four. And they, at one point, which were, 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 were that actually, Newcastle last year actually finished, at one point, should have finished third. It's only because they went de uh, deep into the League Cup, they focused on that. Um, but let me know your thoughts down below. It's an interesting topic because, you know, at the moment, we're, 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 we're flying and playing extremely good football, but we're right on the knife edge. If we get one or two injuries, it could be absolute curtains. Um, you know, I am going to, I just want to put it out there. I'm going to be doing a lot of, a lot more content over the next two months. And then we could practically go into every single game home and away. If I can make sure you have subscribed, we're less than 450 away from 18,000 subscribers. I'll see you all soon, people. Thank you all for watching. Take care. I am. Out.